What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create an entrance canopy in Revit. So I thought uh, it would be cool to kind of go over creating a part of the building that may maybe gets neglected when it comes to tutorials and courses and that is this uh, cool kind of entrance canopy and I saw this one with these cool angled uh, columns and I thought well why not create that in Revit that would be quite cool. So this video is going to be all about that. Uh, now for this uh, I'm uh, going to be using the massing environment a little bit and then also using some columns and if you want to learn more about these parts of Revit these really complex advanced topics, make sure to check out my website balkanarctic.com. That's going to be the first link just below the video. There I take the extra time to go in depth and explore all of these topics. I have courses uh, over a hundred hours of content. Each course is several hours and just it goes in depth into all of these little settings and features and adjustments that you need to know. So if you're interested, make sure to check it out. Also, make sure to subscribe. I make useful Revit tutorials each week. I make multiple tutorials, so you don't want to miss any of those. And finally, make sure to like this video. It does really help me a lot with the YouTube algorithm. It helps promote the video to other people. So if you don't mind, hit that like button. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. So let's immediately get started by going to Models and then going to New. Uh, now, as for the template file, I'm just going to be using my custom Balkan Arctic template, the metric version. And if you want to check out my templates, you can find them on my website, balkanarctic.com. And that is going to be the uh, third link in the description. Anyways, let's now click OK and let's let Revit start right up. Now, as soon as Revit starts up, uh, let's get straight into it uh, by simply building a small building which is going to be kind of hosting uh, this uh, entrance canopy or however you want to call it. Uh, now for that I want to just move here to the south elevation and add a few more levels. So let's go to the level tool, LL is the shortcut, and I'm going to be using a pick lines tool with the 3.6 meter offset. So let's add just a few more levels hit the escape key, go back into level one, uh, go to the wall tool. And here I'm just going to be using this generic 400 millimeter wall, uh, use the rectangle tool, and then just make sure that it goes from level one up to level four and create that rectangle like this. Perfect. Now I'm just going to move it a little bit here. There we go. And now let's add a door. So an entrance means there's a door. So let's go here to the door tool. And uh, because this is my template here, I, as you can see, I have many options for doors. And perhaps the best one here would be this uh, exterior door, the, the largest one. And let's just place it here on this wall. Now, obviously, it might be a little bit small uh, for this building. So uh, you might want to try something different. But for now, for the purposes of this uh, kind of example video, I'm just going to be going with this. Next, we have to model the canopy. Uh, now the canopy, you can model that either as a roof or you can just model it as a floor. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to be using the roof tool and then we can host it on level two as Revit kind of offers us and let's say yes. Uh, now for the roof, you can, well, we can go with the generic 400 millimeter type. That's quite all right. And then I'm just going to build a circle here and I'm just going to place it at the center of the door and let's make it four meters in the, in the in diameter. Next, I'm just going to move it like so, and just a little bit outside of the building, perhaps like that. Let's make it 4.5. There we go, perfect. So you want it to be a little bit outside, and then you want to just go to the line tool, go up to there, like that, same thing goes here, and there we go, perfect. Next, go to the split element tool, SL is the shortcut, split it anywhere along this line here, hit the escape key a couple of times, go to the trim and extend tool, and then just trim and extend that like so. And finally, let's select the whole thing and uncheck define slope and then hit finish. It disappeared, well, that's because it's above and here it is. So we have that canopy or that roof uh, and this is what that looks like. So once we have this 
here above our door, the next step will be to kind of build the whole bottom part. Now, one thing that I'm just going to change is give it a little bit of an offset of like one meter because it feels a little bit too low. Yeah, this looks much better now. Okay, so once we have this, the next step is to build a ceiling. So uh, if you've seen the image, so here uh, in this image, as you can see here, it can has that dropped ceiling and then here it has the opening where the columns attach. So that's exactly what I'm going to be using. So let's go back into level one here. And now to see the roof above, we have to go here and find, or sorry, ceiling plan for the ceiling. And to see the roof above, we have to play around Let's try level two. Okay, now it's going to display it. That's perfect. Uh, now, once we have displayed that <clears throat> uh, that roof, what I'm going to do next is go here into ceilings and let's go with sketch ceiling. And what you want to do is just use pick lines, hit the tab key, and it's going to kind of highlight the whole thing. Next, you want to go to the circle tool and let's make a smaller circle inside, something like Let's try 2.9 meters and then let's try moving this towards the inside like that. Maybe it's a little bit too large. 2.7. Yeah, that might be a little bit better. And then we can just kind of bring it closer to this edge here. There we go. Okay, so once we have this ceiling created, uh, let's make sure to change it from generic to plain. Uh, go to the 3D view and then hit finish. So as you can see, this is where it's located. So just by default, it's going to set it to the height offset of 2.6 meters. So let's increase that to four meters. We need a little more, 4.2, a little more, 4.6, too much. <laughs> okay, let's try 4.5. Yeah, that's okay. We have that little gap. That's perfectly fine. And it kind of looks similar to that image. Okay, finally, let's go back into level one. And now to see the construction above, we have to go here to the properties panel, scroll down a little bit, go to underlay settings and change the range from none to level one. And I think we have this look up option. Okay, that doesn't help. Let's try level two. Okay, that's going to solve that. Okay, so now we can see the ceiling above and then I'm just going to go here to the floor tool. Again, go to the circle and let's create a smaller circle here. And I'm just going to move it a little bit like that. So it's this is what that's going to look like. And then just hit finish. Perfect, go to the 3D view and this is what we have. Uh, now you can also bring this up. So the thickness of this is 150 millimeters. So we can just give it a height offset of 0.15, which is 150 millimeters. And then if I uh, go into level one and just add a floor around that, let me just demonstrate that. So just a simple rectangular floor. Now, if you go to the 3D view, it's just going to look like that. So as you can see, it's a little bit above that uh, floor and that's exactly what you want to see. Okay, so once we have that created, now it's time to build our columns. Now for the columns, we first have to have a something to host those columns on because we want to know the path starting from here going up to the, the roof structure. Now we can achieve that going by going here to Massing Insight, turning on Show Mass and going into In-Place Massing. So this is going to be a little trick where we can use uh, In-Place Massing to host our columns. So let's click OK. And now you want to go to set work plane, pick this plane over here. You can go to the line tool and just go from one side to the other. Uh, I'm just going to uncheck 3D snapping and make sure that the drawn work plane is selected and just go like that. Now we have the center, so I can go here to the inscribed polygon tool for sides. I'm just going to make it eight and then I'm going to go like this. There we go. Perfect, and then I can just delete this line. Finally, uh, turn kind of upward a little bit. Uh, now, if this is giving you a problem, you can just go into wireframe mode, and now you can see that. Next, you want to go again to set work plane, and then you want to set the bottom of that roof. So not the ceiling, this is the ceiling. See how the ceiling has that highlighted inner circle, but 
like this. The inner circle doesn't highlight, meaning that this is the roof. And also it says roof next to my cursor, so that helps as well. Anyways, let's select that line. And now I'm just going to use pick lines to pick one of these uh, arcs. Then go to the line tool. And again, uh, just make sure that this is set to draw on a work plane. This is, this is what's going to kind of make the main difference. So if this is uh, if it's set to draw on face, uh, there's a high chance you might mess everything up. So don't do that. Uh, anyways, so just looking at the polygon here. Okay, so once we have this line, now we have the center. So again, we can go to the uh, polygon tool, eight sides, go from that midpoint all the way out like this. Perfect. Hit the escape key a couple of times, and then we can select this kind of half circle and just delete that. Perfect. Uh, we can go back into hidden line and just make a selection. And because these are the only two things that we have, that's the only thing that's going to highlight. And now when I click on create form, it's going to create a form that looks like this. Now you might be saying, well, those aren't columns. And I do know that. Don't worry about it. I'm just going to hit finish. And I'm just going to be using this to kind of tell columns where they should go. Now the downside of columns is the fact if I go here to the structure tool and go to the column, even if I set this to a slanted column, I don't have the, the ability to pick lines. Now that's okay, but the downside yet again is the problem that I don't even have the ability to kind of pick out the, the point here that we have created. So instead of using columns, we can just use beams. Now this is going to give us a lot more versatility because if I go here to pick lines, I can just pick out all of these lines. So that's kind of cool. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do next is just uh, simply uh, going to go to load family and load in a different beam. So let me show you here in the US metric library, just scroll down and find structural framing steel and then we should have let's see here we go so we have this round kind of tubing beam hit open uh now you can select as far as the size goes i'm going to go with this one 168 and let's load in a few more let's try this one and then this one so we'll see which one works the best and finally, one more tip uh, here uh, in the properties for geometric position, uh, you have a, a few settings here. And the important one is the Z justification, which is set to top. You just want to change that to center. So it kind of the line that we select is going to be the center of our column, not the top of it. Okay, now I click. And this is what I get. And then you click again, and again, and again and a few more times to complete this structure. There we go. Hit the escape key a few times. And now if you don't want to see the, the mass that we have created, which you obviously don't want to see, you can simply go here to Massing Insight, turn off Show Mass, and now we have that cool canopy structure. Uh, now, one quick tip, uh, because this has kind of wood underneath uh, when it comes to this image, I suggest you just select the ceiling here, go to edit type, then go into edit, and then here in the material uh, for the uh, the kind of this layer here, which is gypsum wallboard, that's kind of the finish layer, uh, you can just change that into something different. So I'm just going to search for siding. There we go. As you can see, this siding, I think it looks really good. Load that in, hit apply, OK, OK, apply, OK. Oh, we have to switch to realistic as well. There we go. So as you can see, it looks a lot better with that siding. And then, of course, you can select these columns and then you can change that their material here. Just keep in mind that this is an instance parameter, so you have to select each column uh, before you change the material because that's the only way that you will apply materials to all of them. And then here you can just search for something different if you want. But there you go, we have created our canopy. It looks really good. And because this is now a roof, we can go to modify sub elements, add a point here in the middle of it, Kind of like that, and then go to modify sub elements, select that point, and just bring it a little bit lower for drainage purposes, which is obviously really, really important. So that's why we use this. And then perhaps it could drain through one of these circular columns. That would be cool. Perhaps this one. 
here. Okay, and if it shows like this on the bottom, which obviously you don't want in this case, you just go here into edit type, you go into edit and you just check variable here, which is just going to give it a variable thickness. And now as you can see, it's flat on the bottom, but it has that kind of uh, drainage curve on top. And that's exactly what you want to see. So there you go. We have created quite a cool canopy in Revit and it wasn't really that bad. It was quite simple. So I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, if you want to check out some, some of my courses, check out my website, BalkanArctic.com. That's going to be the first link in the description. If you want this project file, the second link in the description will take you to my Patreon page where you can sign up and get access to all of my Revit project files. Okay, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, and so on. And I'll see you soon with another Balkan Arctic tutorial. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.